Let's talk about the latest developments now with Congressman Mike Turner, Republican from Ohio, who serves as chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Chairman, always good to have you on BBC Jimmy, News. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, as the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, I want to ask you, what can you tell us? Is an Israeli full ground incursion into Lebanon imminent? Well, we'll have to see. You know, one point that Tom made that I thought was so important in your panel discussion is that this really is a, a fair failure of the Biden administration policies, where the Biden administration has continued to argue restraint. That really is an argument for the status quo. And Israel can't sustain the status quo after October 7th and the uh, unbelievable uh, atrocities that occurred with Hamas entering into Israel and, and just slaughtering uh, you know, average, average citizens. And now, obviously, with the threat of Hezbollah to the north, um, uh, of Israel but and the rockets that have continued to rain down, the, the Biden administration has got to begin to take a look at this as, you know, this is a, this is Israel's chance and okay. really the Palestinians' chance and Lebanese chance uh, to free themselves from the uh, Iranian proxies. So let me ask you a bit more about that strategy, because President Biden and Vice President Harris, they have said that they support the Israeli strike that killed uh, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah, saying it's a measure of justice that he had blood on his hands. But they say it is time to de-escalate because of some of these numbers we're seeing, the number of people killed and displaced in Lebanon, of course, what's continuing in Gaza. Do you agree that it is time for Israel and Hezbollah to lay down arms and try to find some sort of diplomatic solution? Well, I mean, you included both Israel and Hezbollah, and as you know, that's an impossibility. Hezbollah and Hamas are both proxies of Iran. Uh, the administration fails to do the connection that this really is not a regional conflict or even a territorial conflict. This is nefarious actions by Iran uh, to, um, you know, to challenge and to attack and, and undermine, and as they openly say, eliminate uh, Israel. What we have here, though, is a great opportunity for Lebanon, because Lebanon, to an extent, is being occupied by Hezbollah. This is not an, an invitation by, by Lebanon. Uh, Iran, through Hezbollah, their proxy, uh, their franchise, occupies Lebanon, continues to put Lebanon and Lebanese people at risk as they, from Lebanese territory, attack Israel. Uh, Israel has no, no other uh, options but to defend themselves and then to go and to take out okay. uh, that military uh, presence that's there. They can't continue to just use missile defense to protect the people of Israel. They have to take to Hezbollah, which is, again, Iran's presence in, in, in Lebanon, the Iranian proxy, uh, so, to, Chairman, to eliminate that threat. Let me ask you this, because we know that members of Benjamin Netanyahu's government have been critical of him for not having a, a strategy, an end strategy for the war in Gaza. So what would it look like to destroy Hezbollah in Lebanon? Well, I mean, the Palestinian people have also just as great of an opportunity here as, as Lebanon does. They need to uh, you know, put off the shackles of uh, Hamas, which is really Iranian control of the Gaza territory. Uh, they need to, you know, as they talk about even a two-state solution, it's going to require at least, at least they have a governing body. They don't even have governance uh, because they've been occupied by this terrorist organization, uh, Hamas, in, in Gaza. Uh, they are much captive to Maza and, and threatened by their lives are threatened, as we see from the continuing conflict that's ongoing, uh, as, as Israelis are. Uh, this is an opportunity for the entire region to say, we're going to claim our independence from Iran, and we're going to do so uh, by um, you know, freeing ourselves from the shackles of Hezbollah and Hamas. I guess I just want to follow up with that and ask one more question. With the numbers of more than 1,000 people killed in Lebanon in the past two weeks, up to a million displaced, the ongoing war in Gaza, what cost does this wider war bring with it? Well, I think it, it brings to really the Iranian proxy, the military force that Iran has occupying uh, that portion of Lebanon, um, the, the destabilized effect of, of an, an ability for them to continue to kill people in Israel. You know, I, I, Israel has both, you know, through the exploding uh, technology advice, devices, the pagers, uh, the radios, they've really made it an insecure environment for Hezbollah to continue to operate. Right. And then taking the attacks directly to the leadership of Hezbollah, this is a great opportunity for Lebanon to get its independence from Iranian occupation and to then go to, uh, to peace negotiations between Lebanon and Israel. Chairman, while we have you, I want to ask you about Ukraine. You met with Ukrainian President Zelensky while he was in the U.S. last week. Uh, he was here backing his plan for victory, and we don't have the exact details of that plan, but it is likely to include the request to use Western long-range missiles deeper into Russian territory. From your discussions with him, would this plan mean victory for Ukraine? I believe so, because right now, because of the restrictions the Biden administration has put on Ukraine, 
uh, Russia is not feeling the effects of the conflict. It's like, you know, uh, Ukraine is fighting with one arm behind its back. We're beginning to see um, domestic indigist, um, uh, you know, drone systems that Ukraine is building, being sent into Russia and being taken to take out uh, some of the weapons stores, some of the weapons uh, capabilities that are being used to kill people in Ukraine. But imagine if that had been something that had been permitted in the beginning of this conflict. Uh, Russia's ability to continue uh, to prosecute this would be greatly diminished. And, you know, of course, one of the main targets that they're hitting is Iranian uh, drones that right. are being uh, shipped into Russia. Very quickly, we have about 30 seconds left, Chairman. Uh, we saw President uh, Zelensky meet with former President Trump, who said he has a good relationship with Putin and with Zelensky and that it takes two to tango. Are you worried about the message that that sends on this war? Oh, I thought it was a great meeting. Um, you know, Trump himself openly said, you know, it's too early to say what any of the details would be. Clearly, he supports uh, Ukraine and, and democracy. And he actually, as you know, was the first to give uh, lethal weapons to Ukraine, the Obama administration having failed to do so when the first incursion taking Crimea occurred. And uh, they, they had a very warm conversation. They spoke very warm about the time period that they had a relationship when President uh, Trump uh, was president. Uh, so I thought it was a very good um, you know, foresight into the future okay. as to how this relationship can, can really put pressure on Russia and hopefully bring it into the conflict. Chairman, always good to have you on BBC News. Thank Jimmy, you so thank much. You.